god. Hello, sugars. I'm just your regular old Southern Belle. And in today's video, I want to tell you exactly how I became dead free. Hello, beautiful people. Welcome back to my channel. I am Mella for those of you who don't know. And in today's video, I'll be telling you guys exactly how I paid off my car loan in just three years. Now, if you're interested in how I became debt free, then keep on watching the video. And if you're new here and you're interested in travel, lifestyle, a little bit of beauty, and finding out how it is and what it is like to be a doctor in Jamaica, then just hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and keep on watching. All right, guys, let's get into the video. Let's go. Uh, 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 uh. Let's go. All right, so a little backstory. I bought my car in 2017, and it was a 2015 Honda Civic because we don't buy anything exactly new because as soon as you drive that car off the lot, it devalues. So, you know, I went for a little bit of an older car that was still new enough. So I got the 2015 Honda Civic and it was being sold for $2.55 million from the car lot, that's the car mart that I bought it from. And at the time, I had wanted to save up for a car because what had happened was I had a car before which was bought for me when I was in university and that car was a 10 year old car, hand me down that my parents got and it lasted me through university and then on the last day of my exams, the final final days, my car shut down on my way home. On my way home, I was left for road. So I was without a car and up until then when I was in internship, I was sharing the car, I was borrowing my father's car. And then, you know, now that I had been able to save up a little, I just decided, okay, it's time to get my own wheels, you know, vroom, vroom, go certain. Because, you know, one thing about sharing a car, and, you know, it is a blessing that I, I was able to share a car. But one thing about sharing a car is that, you know, you have to factor in other people's schedule. And I had to pick up my sisters, and I wanted to have a little bit more freedom on the reins. So I said, okay. And on top of that, someone ran into my father's car and wrote, like, smash it in if I can find those pictures I will put in those pictures so point is I really 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 need the car because I need to get around and trust me like paying for taxes and on public transportation time consuming taxing to the body and I just could not do it so I did that for two months while I had no more vehicle to, to drive so I did that for two months and I said, okay, it's time for me to get a car. So up until that point, I had saved up about $300,000 for a car, and the car was valued at $2.55 million. So I went and I looked, and the car company had recommended to go to a specific loan officer who they've worked before, because I know that person is pretty quick and fast and efficient. So that is how I ended up getting my car loan from Scotiabank. I already had a Scotia account, and Scotia lent me the money now one thing you should know about getting a car and with a lot of debt and getting any kind of loan is that there tend to be loan fees so even though i was borrowing 2.25 million because i had 300,000 out of pocket from scotia it ended up that it i ended up borrowing around 2.4 million dollars roughly in, um, from scotia in total or i had because of how the fees that were added in and padding on so my car loan was to last for five years at a rate 0.9.99 percent call it 10 percent interest rate over the five years so me me's a girl who don't like old people so i was like this cannot work i need to pay this off quicker okay? me don't like to old people now the thing you should understand is that not all debt is bad debt and especially if you're able to manage your debt and you know pay it off in a steady manner then debt can actually help to build up the credit because in a lot of our systems nowadays we need a credit history when you're trying to get loans when you're trying to you know buy a home all of that is factored in so not all debt is bad debt so you have to have that mindset you know i don't like to own people but as i've gotten older i've kind of realized that I'm not telling you guys to go into debt, but I'm not telling you guys to be irresponsible in your spending or to go into debt, but you should understand that getting manageable debt and debt that you know that you can pay off is something that helps to build your credit 
um, credit history so that when you are choosing to make bigger purchases in life, then you have something that can help to alleviate. Now, the car loan was my first, 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 first sign of debt. I was fortunate enough that my parents took on all the burden of my education through medical school, so I did not have student loan debt. So my car loan was my first little piece of debt to say, Arnaliza, big woman, no, let her, you know, learn to manage her finances. Now, before I get my little debt, because I didn't have any student loan debt, and I'm no picnic, and I'm no house debt, so you know, so girl was balling, girl was stunting, girl was shopping on Amazon Prime membership, spending our money like say everything is anything and if i want it i see it i want it i got it i want it you know whatever ariana grande said i was just like oh i want that i want that i'm gonna go there i'm gonna drive i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that so you know i was not that responsible with my money which is probably why i didn't save up as much for the down payment of the car but i got the car now it's time to get serious. So the first thing that I did is that I asked, I, I asked questions. I went to loan officer and I asked questions. I said, is there any kind of, you know, penalties that would be assigned if I paid, on the, paid off the debt earlier? And she said, no. The next thing I had asked for is, you know, if I wanted to make additional payments, how do I do that? So they advised me that I would have to go into the bank physically, which is, an, is a taxing thing because you have to join the line. And then you have to tell them that you're trying to make a down payment or a loan payment on the premium or the principal, I should say, on the principal of the principal value of the loan. Because if you just put it in the online or put it on the bank account, I don't know why, but there's no way online to make additional payments. So you can't make additional payments through the ATM either. You have to actually go into the bank and say that you want to make a down payment on the principal in order for the loan to get consolidated or to put additional payments on the loan right so that those are the first two things that I did so I had to understand my debt assess my debt and to know where I'm starting from now the debt the monthly payment was fifty thousand eight hundred dollars per month for my car loan and you know when you just start paying debt it does not go directly to the car loan it goes back to the interest first before it goes towards any and that's for any loan when you're buying a home when you're buying a um, car the initial payments don't go towards paying off your debt it goes towards paying the interest rate first so the bank can make their money before it actually goes on to paying for the item that you purchased or you borrowed the money for so the first, as I tell you, the first thing I did was to understand my debt, understand how much I was getting it into, find out, you know, what was my rate, and to find out how I could pay off my car loan debt. I actually made the goal that I wanted to pay off the loan in three years. So making a timely goal and coming up with a plan and a strategy of action definitely is something that you need to look into before you even start paying off the goal, before you start assessing your expenses. Before you start tracking anything, just come up with a goal. How, how much debt I have, how much I'm going to pay off, how much interest rate is, when I'm going to pay it off. Those are the first things you do when you're doing this debt repayment. So you list out all your debt them. If you have, I just had one, but if you have multiple, all of them. How much I open it, put the interest rate, how much is the interest rate for each debt, and how I'm going to pay it off. Some people may use the different payment methods like the debt snowball, the debt avalanche where the debt small snowball you pay off your smallest debt first and then that you know you build up that or the debt avalanche you pay off the debt with the highest interest rate whichever one you choose you can choose to do that. But having a plan of action and knowing where you stand in terms of your finances is the best way to pay off debt. So that's where the, that is where I started my plan of action how much debt I had how long and how quickly I was going to pay it off and when I wanted to pay it off so that's where I started then the next thing I did was that I needed to get my expenses I need to get my money in check I needed to know how much I was spending what I was spending on and girl boy person place thing whatever I was shocked shocked 
that's how much money I was spending on extraneous and things that I did. Like, no, I was shocked when I tracked my expenses. And I looked up and I added up how much I spent over the month. I was like, me, really? Really? Is me, is me, me, spend so much money on things that don't important? No, trust me. And I still track my expenses. This is my little notebook that I used to track my expenses in here. I'll show you a page. And in here, you can see I put the... It's not very clear, but I'll probably put a picture up here. I put dates. I put the category, which is whether it's food, transportation, clothing, personal spending, loan repayment. I put the amount of money that was spent and I put allocation. So, you know, I spent, um, for example, I went, I bought food. I spent $500 and that was spent at... Um, KFC buying something so I, the, that is what the allocation area of our category is to find out where exactly was I spending my money and let me tell you I realized that I'm a girl who loves stationery and up until the point I had spent over $15,000 on stationery on stationery pen paper book notebook and I'm not even in school anymore girl not studying for nothing at the time at the time I was not studying for nothing because I was like a SHO or yeah I was a SHO it was in March of 2017 I was a SHO girl was not studying for nothing girl was not doing exam and I just up until that point I had spent so much money on just stationery I won't even get into how much money I spent on food Whew. girl no sorry eating out Get that money, get that, that is what I was giving, that is what I was telling this food establishment, just take my money, take my money, take my money. That is what was going on. I was shocked. I'm still shocked to this day. So, after I assessed what my debt was, tracked my spending, now I had to get into the nitty gritty of it. And that was to create my budget. Now, my budget was supposed to be my guide as to how I would spend my money each month. And I cannot I'll deviate from that because your girl is trying to pay off debt. Your girl is trying to be debt free and boiling. Now, I'm the type of person who I don't believe that debt payment should be so taxing that you can't enjoy life. So part of my debt, um, part of my budget had to include you know, points and time and money for me to enjoy just a little spending money and just a little thing. I'm not one of those people who I'm going to be eating ramen noodles for the rest of my life and all of that. No, it is not that deep. You have to, girl, I have to live life too. As And as you guys realize, I like to travel. I like to go out. I like to experience life. So, you know, I had to, you know, account for that. So I created in this book, this is my bullet journal. I have the month and then... Each month, I make my debt, I mean, I make my budget. So, this is my budget. I don't think you guys can see. And how I would budget, um, put my budget is, the first thing and the first payment, um, the categories that I would use, first thing was, I'd put the category of what I was paying off. The next thing I'll do is the allocation on how I'd allocate it. And then I'll do an expected amount, meaning that this is the amount I'm budgeting. And then I'll put actual because sometimes you may go over, you may go under, so you want to know exactly how you're spending your money. The first category or the first thing I did was debt repayment. And that was the number one thing I focused on. I had debt repayment. I put um, loan. I put how much um, I was to pay monthly, which was a 50800 And then that was towards car loan, right? Then the next category was for my fixed expenses, such as um, in under fixed expenses, you'll put things like if you have any bills, you need to know how much you're spending on your bills, and you put a fixed expense, and so and that is a fixed recurrent expense, electricity, utilities, as well as I personally put as a fixed expense because I believe in paying myself first. I put savings. So every month I had to put a specific amount amount of money in my savings account no matter what it is my fixed expense and i have to do it every month 
because I don't believe that you should just pay off debt without saving and without living life. The next fixed expense was gas, because if I'm buying a car, I need gas for the car, groceries, buying food to cook instead of eating out as much as I do. And those were my fixed expenses, bills, savings, transportation, gas, and food. And those were my needs, those were my must-haves, those are the things that I had to do every month and I had to have the money for to cover those expenses every single month. The next thing that I put was wants. Those are flexible expenses. Oh, another thing that was under my fixed expenses is health insurance because I had to get my own and I had to make sure that I had enough health insurance to cover my lifestyle and to make sure, because even though I'm a doctor, you know, we are exposed to patients who are at risk of getting sick and I had to make sure that I had money to pay for that. So health insurance. Then I had wants or flexible expenses. And those are things where I put in like, as I mentioned, I had to make sure that I had, I budgeted for things like clothing because I, even though I don't buy clothes every month, I try to put a little bit of money for clothing because, um, for my, you know, keeping myself dressed. I had personal care. So for me, getting my hair done, getting my nails done and stuff like that, personal care, I put that in my budget, getting my brows wax, getting whatever is important to you. I put that on my, my personal care because Going out of debt don't mean same as to pop down. No, you have to still take care of yourself. So, but it's just that I'm going to try and keep those expenses as low as possible. So it is a flexible expense. The next thing that I put is for fun money. Fun money means I, is the money that I use to budget for my trips and for going out of town. So one thing that people don't know is that when I go on trips, when I go on vacation, when I go on things, and make big purchases i would have been i have often been saving for those things for months before i don't necessarily go on trips all the time and anytime that i have money left over i just put it towards the trip no so those are the wants and the wants are things that i want to do but they're not necessary so if i except for you know taking care of myself but if at any point I wanted to, you know, I didn't go out or I didn't spend any money on the clothes, then I'll just put that money away, right? So I made my budget, right? So you're with me. Assess my debt, track my spending, make my budget. And I tried to make my budget with a little bit of wiggle room because, as I said, I wanted to not be so strict that i was not living life because i i don't know about people who everybody's all you know wait until you're 65 and all of that when you retire no i want to live life as i am still paying off my debt no the biggest eye opener as i mentioned before was tracking my spending and even though i had my budget my budget came as a result of how I was tracking what I was spending and realizing that I was blowing a lot of money in a lot of areas. So the food part was a big area of blowing money. So when I made my budget, I had to get my food down to a specific number and anything over that my out, my money done, girl, I forgot to starve, girl, I forgot to eat tinners for the rest of the, the, the month, whatever it is, girl, girl, I forgot to starve, all right? Girl would, girl would have to starve. I'm not even going to lie. If that was going, if that, so I had to, it, it taught me discipline because I was going to, is I not going to starve? And if I blow my gas money, I'm not going to, girl, girl, I have to go foot it, take bus, hitch a ride, whatever it is. But, or I'm going to turn on my yard, which you should be doing if, during these corona times and not out there. All right? Be responsible and don't do unnecessary going out. I mean, I'm not saying do out on a trip or two, but every night out on a braf, no, not needed. Not needed. But anyways, so I, I realized that if I was Tana Yad, next thing is to also get your utilities down. You don't need to be spending so much money. Look at where you're, you're wasting money in utilities. Get energy saving, but get a phone plan, whatever. Try to get the most... I don't watch TV. I usually use the internet. I I watch mainly YouTube to be honest. I don't really watch TV like that. 
So I don't have, I don't watch TV. I have a TV and I have not turned on my TV in like 10 years. My family is the one who watch TV. So they watch and they don't even watch it to that. So, but if that is something that you like, try to get the most basic cable package, try to find or try or get Netflix, which it works out to a little bit cheaper because it's a specific amount each month. Do whatever you can to get that money down because when you're attacking debt, it is about the discipline. It's about cutting the expenses where you can so that you can have enough money to pay down on that debt. Right? Now, when after you cut your expenses, the next thing is you look at where you have extra money. And the extra money that you're bringing in, that is what you use to help to pay off your debt faster. So any little time I had money left over, any little time I get a little bonus, say Christmas bonus, say I get some unexpended windfall, say they renegotiate the contract and we're getting paid a little bit more. Any money that went over my budget, meaning that, not that I went over the budget, but I came in under budget and I had money left over. I just went into the bank, stand up in my line and say that I am pay making a lump. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, sir. I'd like to make a lump sum payment on the principal of my car loan. And that is what I did to pay off my debt. So if it's $20,000 extra I put on the car loan, it will reflect faster than the amount that you are paying monthly. Because as I mentioned before, the monthly amount, it going to interest first. And sometimes, you look if you, if you go to a next way to you can find out how your money is going with the loan, what I did, you go up to the the bank right and you ask them for a print house of your loan payments and when you look at the loan payments and you realize how much of your money is not going towards the loan and when you look and you check and you see how much your loan is not moving a month time you realize say oh no girl have to step up her game so i put a principal down payment and it don't have to be much if it's twenty thousand this month ten thousand next month fifty thousand this month fifty thousand next month any amount that I I got that was extra that was over, I put it towards my car loan, All right? And I did that, and then once you start doing that and you built up enough, you'll start to see a loan dropping a lot quicker when you're doing the lump sum payments because the lump sum payments are going directly to the loan. So if you owe one million dollar and you put twenty thousand dollars. You're going to see the, the the money immediately jump down to nine hundred and eighty thousand versus doing the one million dollar and you're paying twenty thousand dollars through the loan. You might see it move to two thousand dollars. That is a trick that a lot of people don't know, All right? So those are the things that I did so far. Once you start doing those lump sum payments, even if it is just a little bit, even if it's a lot, any little, every mickle make a muckle. Remember that every mickle make a muckle one one coke or full basket and then when you start doing those debt and lump sum payments you realize that your budget your, your, your debt is just going down going down 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 and then after that once the payments start go down to a certain level you realize say uh, your initial payments the payments that you make to the bank then compound interest start work on your side and your money start worth more because you would have paid off the interest and your loan rate would have been going down your interest rate would have been going your loan would have been going down so compound interest so every time you made that money it will start moving the money quicker 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 down and that's what happened at a certain point i didn't have or i wasn't making as much lump sum payments but compound interest did start worth on my side because before when I was paying the fifty thousand eight hundred dollar initially, it was it was worth like fourteen thousand dollars worth of my loan. But as I got closer to the end of my loan payment and I owed a certain amount and I, and it kept on going down because of all the lump sum payments, when I'm making my fifty thousand dollars eight hundred, it start worth forty five thousand dollars worth of my loan. So I just start to my loan drop a little bit quicker every time. So your debt payment stack being worth more each time you pay because you would have been so responsible and so disciplined doing the you know your 
initial lump sum payments that even in times when you don't have the extra money because you have an unexpected expenses like you may have your car insurance to pay or you may have something else another major expense your car you meet up in some sort of accident any unexplained or unexpected expense comes up and you may not have the extra money to pay guess who has made that much of a down payment that compound interest start helping out this girl and the compound interest started to increase the value of my debt payments so my debt just start going down and down and down until i reached my last fifty thousand dollars and i was like girl hey 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 and i was like yes i made it and i was like oh yes it is uh, to the day i'm well to the month i'm about to pay off my loan and i had fifty thousand dollars left when i went into the bank i was like I'd like to make a lump sum payment on my car loan. And they're like, do you want to close the account? I said, hallelujah, yes. And I found out that I had some um, equity built up. So some of the equity from the car loan, or I don't know what they call it in terms of a car loan. But basically, I had, the Scotia had money for me based on my car loan that I had built up. So I thought I would have to pay $50,000. But I ended up having to pay $35,000 because Scotia had owed me $15,000. And so we used that to cut down how much I had had to pay out of pocket. So I only had to pay $35,000. So that was the extra $15,000 that your girl had. And then I closed the account and now I am debt free. And that is how I paid off my car loan in three years. I started off by having a plan. I assessed and understood where I stood in terms of debt. I assessed how much money I was spending out of pocket to find out, you know, where I was spending my money, what I was spending it on. And I also wanted to find out, you know, where I could cut back on my expenses and cut back on items that I was spending way too much money on. Then I did lump sum payments on a car loan so I could make a bigger impact on the loan itself. And then after that, compound interest helped to pay off the loan because then the value of the loan or the value of the payments that I was making started to make a bigger impact on the loan itself. And then I made my final payment. And in three years, I paid off my car loan. Now, I hope you guys found this video helpful and that you could pick up some tidbits as to how to pay off a loan, a car loan, but this can go for any loan in a specific amount of time. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your support. Don't forget to hit that like button, you know, push the video with the YouTube algorithm, comment below. Tell me if you are debt free, if you're working to be debt free and how you have paid off any loans. And until next time, thanks for watching. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Hit that subscription button. Hey. All right, guys. I appreciate your support. Until next time. Peace.